Hello everyone, this is Direwolf20, and welcome to episode 67 of Direwolf20's Let's Play series. Today, I've got exciting news everybody. We've got a new mod in the mod pack. Dun dun dun! That's right, it's uh, currently playing on version 1.8.1 .1 of the Direwolf20 pack, and I'm excited to announce that we have a brand new mod recently released for Minecraft version 1.10. Any ideas as to what it might be? Any? Any guesses? What mod could Direwolf have added to the pack that is responsible for such hype? Is it perhaps Thermal Expansion? That's right, Thermal Expansion, if you missed the mod spotlight a week or so ago, is now available for Minecraft version 1.10. Um, so good news, Thermal Expansion is available. Bad news, Thermal Dynamics is not available. So we've got the full suite of Thermal Mods in here, right? So in, in case you're not so fully aware of the way the different Thermal Mods are, there's Thermal Expansion, which is usually like the machines, right? Um, and then there's um, some tools in Thermal Foundation along with like the ores and the metals. So th Thermal Foundation is like where all the ores and the metals come from, and then the machines built on top of Thermal Foundation, right? Um, and then there's a handful of other things in Thermal Foundation. All kinds of like the generic stuff that's used for some of the other thermal mods as well. Um, so that's thermal foundation, right? And then there's thermal dynamics, which are the pipes and the all the piping stuff. So like the the pipes and the item pipes and the energy pipes and the liquid pipes and all that stuff is thermal foundation. Is thermal dynamics? Yes, thermal dynamics, which is not currently available yet. Um, so that is. I, I had the decision of to whether to wait until Thermal Dynamics is out um, before adding all the Thermal Mods to the pack or go ahead and just add what's out now and then, you know, throw Thermal Dynamics in there when it's out. Guess which one I chose. Yep, I decided I wanted you guys to have access to the Thermal Mods as soon as they were ready. So hopefully that it's uh, some excitement for a lot of you guys. I'm pretty hyped about that. I think it's pretty cool. And we've been doing a lot of magical mods lately. A lot of uh, Batania the last couple episodes, which by the way, we set up some really cool, I mean, technically, yes, it was all for Batania, but if you really look at what I did over the last few episodes, it was all very technical in nature. So it was a lot of applied energistics and uh, refined storage and like technical design around magic-based mods. But, I definitely want to get into the thermal mods now that it's available. So I figured I'd build a thermal room. Uh, we'll go ahead and toss some draconic stuff over here to help us get hooked up. So we can put our wand away. Probably going to want a basic energy crystal. Probably going to want a wireless energy crystal, which will require... Ooh, blaze rods. We're going to need more blaze rods. Do we have blaze spawner in here? You spawn what? Enderman? And this guy spawns wither skeletons. Um... How are we for like making blaze rods or getting blaze rods? Because we're actually kind of low on blaze rods. Look at that. Uh, so options, killing blazes, obviously. And that's about it. So we're gonna have to set up a blaze farm. Let's do that. And then we'll get into the thermal expansion. It's always the case that like I'm ready to do something and then something pops up that I'm like, I need more of X resource. I need a way to get that. We're gonna have to set that up. Um, so spawner. We should actually have, oh, we've got two silverfish spawners. Uh, I could probably turn one of those into a blaze spawner, right? Uh, I just need a soul vial. And we can pop into the, to the nether. Do I have a teleport that leads to the nether directly? I do. Sweet. Gotta love teleporters. If I had to pick like any one mod to actually have available in Minecraft, it would be something that can teleport me around. Mostly because, I guess I don't mind walking, but I figure you guys don't want to watch me walk for like five or 10 minutes every episode. So being able to jump around makes the content that much smoother and quicker, right? Um, so you and you, we're gonna have a blaze guy now. We just need to snag some experience, eight levels, and we can get ourselves a blaze spawner. Slowly but surely. Surprised I don't have an Octodick in there. But to be fair, I rarely use those machines. There, now I have an Octodick capacitor in there. Um, so for that, we're also gonna need a powered spawner. 
All right. Every time you update the pack, or every time I update the pack at least, I've had this issue. Cool. We have most of what we need. Uh, just a couple of vibrant crystals, which we're going to need some vibrant alloy. Maybe we have some. Two, please. And then we're also going to need a Z-Logic controller, which is a zombie, two solarium, two silicon, and redstone. Redstone, two silicon, two solarium, and a zombie skull. Are my vibrants done yet? Yep. We'll get two of these guys. Solarium should be almost done. Nice. And this machine isn't terribly slow. You're done. And then we're going to need to anvil this into the powered spawner, and then we'll be golden. Nice. And now what experience do I need for this guy to go? 16? Not a problem. Good to go. Powered spawner for blazes. I forget what conduits I have over there, but I'm assuming the green ones? Maybe the orange ones? I'm not sure. But we're also going to want insulated redstone, and we're going to want another lever added to this. Um, and then the real question is, how do we want to kill them, right? Because I could either kill them with this sword, which is currently empty. Not that we need a beheading sword for blazes, though, right? I mean, the beheading sword is nice when we're dealing with wither skeletons, obviously, and endermen, because endermen's heads are useful. But, yeah, we'll have to think about that. Let's put this here. We'll put up a new lever here. What's my behind the walls here look like? That, huh? Okay. So what I could do is configure this guy on the top. So you're green and red. So we'll go on the up direction will be brown, always active. Does that sound cool? Maybe orange, because it's a blaze. And that guy can just live right here, right? So all we need now, so the energy conduits do look like the green ones. So top tier energy conduits. Oh, you know what else I'm going to need is an octodeck capacitor to speed up the spawn in. Oh, good, we have lots. Cool. Uh, you're with redstone only, though, please. And an octodeck capacitor can go into you. Nice. 8,000 RF attack to spawn those guys. Uh, and then finally, we just need this dude configured to be orange. Wait, that's the energy conduit. You to be orange. Yeah, that's what we want. Nice. So now when we flip the lever that we're going to place here, that should start this thing spawning. Nice. Beautiful. Uh, so this guy has what? Just beheading five? I didn't put like lapis on him or anything to make him like drop extra drops. Okay. It's good to know. So how do we want to kill these guys? Couple options. Uh, we could go like Killer Joe, or we could go Mechanical User with a different sword, or we could just do like we have over here, a Mob Grinder. Those are all totally options that are possible. Look at all this random loot that's over here in my range collector. Uh, let me think about that. I haven't decided what I want to do there. Uh, the simplest one, obviously, would be... Um, The Draconic Evolution one. Let's do the Mob Grinder from Draconic. Does that sound easy enough? Yeah. Um, so that all needs is that. So a couple of you. One, two. Uh, we're going to want a Draconic ingot. And we're going to want one of these dudes. And then we should be able to get a Mob Grinder going. Yes? So close. Oh, it used up my ingot to make the core. So, this guy, when he receives a redstone signal, runs, or stops running, right? 
Yes. So maybe I'll set it up. I can do two things. I can either put a redstone torch to invert this guy. Let's sleep through the night just to make life a little bit easier. Or we can set it so that the spawner only runs when it's not receiving a redstone signal. Right? Um, so if I put this guy on redstone active without signal, then this stops the spawner and it will also stop the grinder. Right? Uh, and I forget what the range on the grinder is. I'm forgetting if it tells me in the book also. Mob grinder, seven by seven area in front of it. So long story short, it should be plenty. So let's sneak behind here, right? You're gonna be there. You're gonna need power, um, which shouldn't be a problem because we've already got power running back here. And we're also going to want insulated redstone, right? Um, you are probably set to ignore. So what I'm gonna do is just set the redstone to disabled there so he's not connected. Okay, we'll do you and you. This will power the thing, which means he's running. But then we'll configure this guy to disabled so he's not connected. And you're gonna be orange, right? So when the redstone signal is on, the mob grinder is disabled and the powered spawner is disabled. When the redstone signal is off, both are allowed to run and the mob grinder is gonna kill our blazes for us. How cool is that, right? And then the blaze rods will be picked up by the vacuum dude underneath, which will have no problem picking stuff up and returning it to our system. So there's blaze rods cruising. Nice. Okay. Let's make the place look nice again. Um, you know, company's coming. Got to make it look fancy. We'll put this here. I don't know how I got a different tier in, but I did it somehow. You know, direwolf. Things happen. All right, so, oh, it's from the floor. The floor is the different tier, and that's why it was from where the powered spawner was. Nice. So that looks good, right? So let's get blaze rods. Boom. You're going to spawn. You're going to drop blaze rods. And I'm going to crouch so that I don't pick up stuff. And he's dead. Neat. There's no looting on that, but I feel like it's not really necessary to have looting, right? So boom, blaze rods collected directly in here. So now that I've done that, and I'm sure I'll need blaze rods for something else, um, let's go ahead and do the wireless energy crystal. Nice. Because we have blaze rods for that now. Cooking right along, crafting all the things. Wireless energy crystal. Beautiful. So that's good. I'll let that run for a little bit. So what I'll probably want is, let's put, I like the concept of the energy beam is going through that clear glass, right? So basic wireless energy crystal. These guys can just sit right here basic wireless energy crystal. I want a relay. Cool. Uh, and then let's find you. You're bound to two links, so you can have plenty more. Not a problem. And then you can link to this guy. And he's ready to distribute his power to 16 wireless machines. Sweet. All right, uh, more infrastructure for thermal dynamics or thermal expansion or what have you. Uh, let's talk about a couple things that we're probably going to want to get. So one of the things we're going to want to get is Invar, which requires um, iron 
and nickel. Now, have I been? Did we have anything in this pack at this point? Yes, immersive engineering gave us nickel, so that's cool. Awesome. Um, so we've already got nickel, right? Um, electrum simply requires silver and gold. So do we have silver? We do from industrial craft. Sweet. That's even better. Uh, signalum requires signalum blend, which is copper, silver, and redstone. Obviously copper we've got, again, both from uh, immersive engineering and industrial craft. And then finally, um, the other upgrade part you might need is enderium, uh, which is ender pearls, right, and enderium base, which is tin, silver, and platinum. So silver, tin we have, and platinum. I don't know if we have anything that's or dictionary with platinum. Uh, maybe we will have to find a way to get platinum ore. So we can totally get that. It's probably part of world gen. I don't know if it was retro gen in the pack. I don't know if retro gen was done or not, but we've got two options for getting platinum, but we don't need that right away. So I'm not going to worry about it right away. Um, what I will do is investigate whether we did retro genning or not and figure that out. So here's the deal. I don't think Platinum Ore is enabled by default. Um, so it's probably not world genning, so it's probably not needed to world gen. Uh, but you can get it from pulverizing nickel. And we already had nickel in the pack. So that's good. Um, so basically, if we pulverize nickel, either in a sag mill or a crusher or a crusher or a pulverizer or what have you, right? There's plenty of ways to do it. But basically, nickel is where you're going to get pulverized platinum from. Let's look over here and see what I've done. So these guys are all your pulverize all the things things, right? You are your give me extra resources pulverizer, right? So maybe what I do is set you up to export nickel. Do we have any nickel ore? I could probably get some. Um, and then How do you even get ores? Kind of a silly question, I'm sure, but I'm curious. Because I legitimately forget how I set this up. Um, you import your Eulorium, you do that. Wait, it's here, isn't it? Yes, so if I remove nickel ore from this list and I add nickel ore to this export, then all nickel will go. Let's go to the deep dark and see if we can find any nickel ore just kind of laying around that would be nice right nickel ore anybody so that's tin draconium that looks like silver nickel 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 that might be nickel ore nice so we've got two of those bad boys right so if i teleport home We will pop into the basement here and we will add nickel ore to this export list. So what this will mean is that now any nickel ore that enters the system will be pulverized here with the dark steel balls. See, with an increased chance of getting platinum, which we just got, which is cool. And if we look now, we should see Pulverized platinum, sweet. That is cool. Um, now, how did I have this set up? Oh, right, I had blacklisted something, right? Um, so you import off of that blacklisted eulorium dust, right? So it's called pulverized platinum and nickel. Grit. So if I add these to the blacklist, now they won't get pulled out of here so quickly, and instead they'll be smelted and then sent into the refined storage system. Cool? So now we've got a source of platinum. So now pretty much all our bases are covered for resources for thermal expansion. All right, so now that we've got that configured, let's go ahead and flip this guy on, which will start hopefully getting us uh, some stuff. Hooray. I think I saw some nickel fly through there. We'll let that run for a few minutes. 
uh, obviously draining a hefty bit of power. And we'll kind of go from there uh, in terms of having some platinum. So that's the main plan, right? Just get some platinum because we're going to want it. Uh, so now the next thing we should probably look at doing uh, would be some actual thermal expansion teaching. So most of the machines from thermal uh, expansion all start off with the same block in the center. And you can see that as I click through the JEI recipes here. Most of them need a machine frame and a reception coil. Uh, there's, there's a couple kinds of coils. Uh, as you can see here, there's a conductance coil, there's a transmission coil, and a reception coil. Most of the time, uh, any machine that accepts energy is going to have a reception coil in it. So I'm thinking the main thing we should do is teach refined storage some of the recipes so that I can get a few things going. So let's do machine frames, check, and also tin gears. Uh, so there's a couple ways to make tin gears, I guess, or isn't there? Sweet. All right, well, that'll work. Uh, so we'll do that. And let's make sure that we actually or dictionary this guy i want to make sure in fact i want to or dictionary everything here so let's make sure our or dictionary button is checked cool uh so we'll teach you that and then you're used for machine frames And then the only other thing I need is basic gear from Ender IO. Apparently that's the route that you have to take for a tin gear. And looks like we're gonna need some more crafters. Luckily that's easy enough to do. My crafting wall will expand shortly. I sold my Enderman present. See that? Neat. I'll just help this along a little bit. All right, that should be enough to get my crafters ready. Here they all come. And then the other crafters can go in here for now. So this will be the beginning of the thermal expansion automation. Cool. So let's get a few machines, because um, there's going to be a few things we want to play with from thermal expansion, for sure. Um, and I feel like, you know, getting a few of the machines up and running would be good. So I don't know if there's anything specific that a redstone furnace needs to have. Uh, pulverizer, I don't know, if there, again, if there's anything specific that a pulverizer can do that a sag mill can't. Um, I mean, I already have a sag mill, right? So I'm not going to probably add too much to that automation. But maybe, well, there'll be something we'll automate. Sawmills are nice. They can get more wood out of stuff, but I've got pretty much a good amount of wood, right? Thermal expansion is definitely like a good mod to use in the early and mid game. There's late game stuff too, but so I mean, the fact that we're starting this at episode 60 something is definitely a thing. Phytogenic isolator might actually be a really cool thing for me to have. I might actually really want one of these because um, that infuses plants with sun and RF and it basically grows plants for you. So remember when I was having trouble with the amount of wheat that I had and a couple other plants? That might be a thing that we might want to look at in the future. Um, but compactor, that's useful for some things that we're probably going to want to make. So let's first off get about a missing sticks. You don't know how to make sticks? How do you not know how to make sticks? How have we gotten this far without you knowing how to make sticks, my good sir? The dire derps are real. So let's get about 10 of these dudes, right? Uh, the compactor, I think, is going to be required for a few things. Um, redstone reception coils might not be a bad idea to do. So let's teach you that as well. It's just redstone and gold. It's easy to make, but... Knowing how to auto craft it would not be a bad thing to have. So I can ask for about 10 of you, and that'll be good. So compactor would be nice to have, along with some copper gears. And a piston. 
just get a... Okay, I don't have much wood. Uh, we'll probably also want a magma crucible. So for that, we're going to want some nether brick and some invar gears. So do we have any invar just yet? I'm guessing not. Uh, so invar can be made in an alloy smeltery. Or we can make it in our induction smelter. Let's make it in the induction smelter, because why not? Reasons, right? Uh, so let's get an induction smelter. There's a lot of things to take a look at getting here, but where is the induction smelter? There it is. I must have skipped it before. So that requires a little bit of invar anyway. Um, so let's just get some iron and some nickel. We'll get a starting amount. And then we'll use this in bar to get thermal expansion stuff started out there. So we've already got our compactor. Let's get our induction smelter needs in bar gears times two. And then our induction smelter should be good to go. So we'll start off with these two, right? I want to bring a crafter out there or two. Uh, I wouldn't mind having a network transmitter and receiver and network card so I can hook up refined storage out there. And then we can start doing some automated crafting with thermal expansion machines. And that would be neat. So while that crafts, let's go set this stuff up. So this guy should be now bound to you. And we'll kind of just start this along the line. I don't have any particular idea as to how I want this to work, but you guys who have played with thermal expansion in the past probably know how these machines work. But they offer uh, very much a similar ability to import and export items. Um, and so, you know, you can have inserting from the top and basically every interface here is configurable so that you can do different things with things. It's pretty neat. Um, there's a redstone control, and then there's other controls that we can add to this a little bit later. Like you can auto output or auto input items, which is pretty slick. Uh, we can also upgrade these machines, which we'll probably be looking at in the pretty near future. Now, how's our networking look? Do we have our network stuff yet? We do. Transmitter, receiver, and card. So maybe we'll have like an underground area, like a little basement in here. It doesn't have to be anything super fancy. But at least we have uh, something to run wires under. So this will be like kind of a nice spot to hook up our network receiver. Maybe like rightish in the center here. that. Uh, well, shift right click you. You don't have a UI, right? So it's the transmitter. Put this guy in there 50 blocks away. So he should now be valid. Beautiful. Nice. I have my cables on me. I do now. So we can do all kinds of fancy automation with this stuff, right? Um, what we could do is configure the induction smelter so that the back would be the output and the bottom would be the input. And then we could have a crafter here, you know, or we could reverse that, it doesn't really matter. Maybe the bottom should be the output and the back should be the input. And different machines have slightly different options, obviously, because of the way uh, things work in terms of the number of inventory slots, right? You can be really specific, right? Like you could be inserting in just this slot, or you could be inserting in just this slot, or extracting from just this slot, or extracting from just that slot. But for what I wanna do, I basically wanna insert things into these two slots and export directly from those. So we'll want an import bus. And technically, yes, I could probably do the invar crafting, uh, or probably any alloy, I think, with Ender.io, because I think all the alloys that you can make work in either um, machine. But, hey, 
we're checking out new mods and having new fun. So we'll import her on you. We will cable on you, and then we should be good to go. That works. Let's get our magnet back on. I had that all for a bit and probably don't need it. Nice. So now we can set up crafting recipes, right? So if we wanted to make Invar, right, let's snag some. And we can add this pattern encoder here, the induction smelter, which says nickel and iron yields Invar. And we'll or dictionary it so that it doesn't care which Invar it gets or nickel it gets for that matter. So now if I came over here and said, hey, I'd like some Invar, please. Let's say 10-ish. You should have no problem crafting. Beautiful. And we can speed this up, by the way. Um, and we will. There's upgrades and augments and all kinds of other cool stuff in thermal expansion. But at the very least, we have the basics of automation, refined storage, and everything that we need for thermal expansion as of this point, right? So we have the foundations of thermal expansion ready to roll. All right, so I'm going to call that the wrapping up point of this episode. Uh, we did some good stuff today. How am I on blaze rods? 296. Sweet. Turn you off for a second. You are, like, still running the way I would expect you to. There's a stack of blaze rods just chilling here. I might... See, typically things were attracted to this area. Right? And my ender hopper... which I'm thinking is sitting on top of an ender chest, was okay being back here. I might want to relocate him more towards the, ow, center of the room. Um, so that's not super centered, but it's at least a little bit closer. Um, I kind of wouldn't mind having him underneath that first powered spawner. I just want to make sure that the range will be good because that's where my doohickey is. So let's move you. to here and now test out how well you can pick up items right so can you pick up like in this corner yep and can you pick up in this corner yep that's gonna be better because before items were dropping over here and they weren't getting quite picked up so well beautiful so that's better you can have that too and that get all the things sweet uh, how are we for platinum now? We should have, if, if, if I set up my automation correctly, and I must have, because we've got plenty of 23 platinum, so that's cool. Uh, you're still running? I can turn you off. Speaking of things still running, you're doing just fine. 9.8 billion RF, just sitting there chilling. This guy's probably running at the moment. Yep, energy buffer is empty at the moment, that's why he's running. Uh, but he'll fill up soon and then be good to go. All right, for now, I think it's wrapping up point. So Daryl20 signing off. Definitely hope you guys enjoyed the episode. We will come back next time and do more fun things with thermal expansion. All right, guys, take it easy.